and every and uh, what sort of things have you learned from studying those birds, especially in South in uh, Africa? What what sort of things have you figured out? Um, so we discovered uh, new areas where birds are endemic. Um, one of the main surprises surprises was that um, that species that had a really really broad distribution across Africa are actually really highly genetically structured, and in that case we proposed that one species would be better recognized at two or three species. And this, of course, would have implication on how we understand the evolution of birds in Africa, mm -hmm. but also more directly on the conservation yeah. of the species. So how would that apply, um, knowing which families or what species of birds belong where, how would that apply to conservation? Uh, because usually, for example, bird life, they recognize species list as the primary um, source to feel, to um, Propose areas of conservation, and of course, if you have endemic species with a, a certain place, this place would have a higher value than. So, uh, depending on um, whether there were a lot of birds in one place, a lot of birds that were only found in that one place, looking at that list, that's how uh, governments would determine what to protect, what not to protect. Uh, yeah, mostly, mostly. So, no, going no. out and actually looking at those birds really is giving you those lists, helping you create those lists, and then. Um, providing that information? Yeah. Very cool. And I understand that you also had a chance to go to Papua New Guinea on a sailboat recently? Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? So we went for two months uh, the last fall um, with several people from the academy, including Jack Dumbaka, who is the curator of birds at uh, the California Academy of Sciences. And we were on that sailboat um, aiming to do an inventory of the biodiversity on all the islands. Uh, in Mines Bay province, which is in the east of New Guinea. And the idea was to do a basic um, survey on most islands there and also get genetic samples to analyze DNA and also try to do, make a, an inventory of all the parasites and viruses that these birds would carry around. Uh, so it, it yeah. looks like over here you've got, um, you're taking a blood sample. Yes. So catching a bird, taking a little blood sample, and then analyzing what diseases it might have um, and who it's related to? Yeah. Okay. And how, do we, um, how are we using those sorts of samples and how are we analyzing them here in the lab? Uh, so the way we do it, we... Um, we come back here, we wear safety clo uh, clothes because we are pretty afraid of contamination of aqua samples, not for human health. So if you sneeze into a sample, then that's yeah. no good? Yeah, because yeah. then you're just going to introduce a bias about diseases. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we extract the DNA, we try to amplify, and then sequence it, um, read it, and then we compare sequence to each other and we see to what they are related to. And did you ever, did, what, when you started doing this kind of research, did you ever expect to go to such exciting places as Papua New Guinea or to Africa? What were you thinking um, when you started doing research? When I started to do research, at least in my field, I was, I was expecting to go in the field somewhere, but mm -hmm. I didn't know where it could be. Then it's just um, a little bit of a matter of luck and willingness to go there, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what we can expect from our, from our job. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And there's some other aspects of your job also, like doing research on um, things that have already been collected. Uh, we have quite a bit of a collection here at the Academy of Sciences behind the walls over on the side there. Two floors down, three floors up. We have about 26 million specimens, including quite a few birds. I'm not sure if you know how many. I'm not sure. I don't uh, know how many. I uh, do not have the exact count Yeah, in mind. But do you use the collections here at the Academy for some of your work? Yeah, we use them. And actually, we try to improve them as well. So on, on most of... Uh, the field trip we go, we collect uh, a few voucher specimens uh, of birds we sacrifice because it's a very important part of a museum is to document biodiversity and then we are able to compare it directly. So what we're looking at right now are study skins where um, these are skins that will last for a very, very long time in the future. Scientists like yourself that might have questions you don't even know of yet yeah. may be using these specimens to, to study the DNA, study the relationships between different animals. Yeah, because even like these very old specimens, um, at the time they were collected, the main purpose was just to... Um, do basic inventory or just describe life. But now we can use... Um, stable isotopes to know where they, where they are feeding, for example, for albatrosses, 
we can use very old DNA that from a, a piece of the skin we take mm -hmm. out of these specimens. So it's a very invaluable source yeah. of um, documentation that we have here. So tracking where things go based on little pieces of tissue, DNA. Um, have any of you over here heard of DNA before? Okay, great, good. So now I'm wondering, do any of you have questions for Jerome? Do you, yeah, go ahead. Ah, so we have a raptor fan over here. She's been watching um, Wild Kratz and has been learning about raptors. Um, Woo, and uh, 320 species of raptors. Have you met all these species? No, I didn't see all of them. Um, they are, yeah, really wide, widespread. And in fact, the, the count is changing a lot because, of course, we are not quite sure what the species is. And the estimates vary between 320, because you are really well documented, and 350, based yeah. on work that genetic genetics people around the world are doing. So kind of like what he's doing here, checking who's related to who, who's a specific species, where they're coming from. We're coming up with new species all the time, which is kind of exciting. Have you ever discovered a new species yourself? Um, discovered a completely never described okay. taxon subspecies, never. But we, we, we split it a few, um, a, a few species based on uh, our genetic and morphological evidences. Very cool. All right, what, what about back there? Do you have a question back there? Aha, so this, we have a great horned owl expert in the back. Oh. Um, do you know much about great horned owls and some of our more local birds? Um, not too much. I know a little bit of the, the, the great horned owl. In fact, here we are just on sequencing the complete genome of the spotted owl, which is uh, of the western spotted owl, uh, wow. northern spotted owl, sorry. So the genome, so are those, are, those are basically the building blocks, the little recipes in our cells that tell uh, a bird to become a bird eventually and a human to become a human. And what does that tell us by knowing the whole recipe for an animal? Um, we can understand like what kind of genes are adapted to what kind of lifestyles and the main question we are interested in that genome project is trying to understand what are the adaptation, the molecular adaptation to uh, nocturnal visions. Ooh, very cool. So trying to figure out what part of that recipe, what part of the genome um, is coding for really good night vision. Yeah, or helping, helping for the night vision. Very cool. All right, I see another question over there. Let's take our last one, yeah. The great horn owl has horns. Do you know of some other really interesting birds that have some really cool ornamentation or um, really strange feathers, um, big structures, anything like that? What's the strangest bird that you've ever studied? I think w one of the most amazing ones that we saw were, are the birds of paradise, mm -hmm. where they have all these amazing feathers going all around. And uh, they're just basically made to attract uh, mates here and there doing these displays and showing the extravagant feathers that are up to like three or four times their body length. Wow, so these are not birds of paradise here, but you can see that there are a lot of colorful animals that um, Jerome gets to go and, and meet out in the field. Yeah, so this was a bit, uh, this was actually, we were very excited by this, space, this, uh, this bird because we thought it was a completely new species. Because when we go in the field, we, we take a, a field guide. Uh -huh. And the drawing was really bad. <laughs> oh. And we just realized that this bird we had in, the, in the hand didn't match uh -huh. the one in the book. And said, oh, that may be completely new. And in fact, it was not because we had a chance to check in another book. on the. On well, the now you have a chance to kind of update the records yeah. that are already existing and making, making sure that the next time someone will absolutely know that it is what you're looking at. And, yeah. uh, and that's part of science. That's part of what we do here is try to verify and fact check. Science is changing all the time, as I'm sure you can attest. Yeah. Um, when you started eight years ago, has it changed quite a bit? Yeah, the, the scale of the amount of data we gather now, the standards completely improved. Uh, and they got multiplied by 10 or 20 now. Yeah, 
Is there anything really exciting that you love working um, in the field, or what do you really love about your job being a researcher and working here at the academy? It has two very, very, very different components. So here we are mostly in the lab dealing with um, genetic material and working in front of a computer most of the time. Mm -hmm. But being in the in the field and collecting the samples is is just a sort of an escape. It, even though it's really, really hard work because we wake up at 4 a.m. and we wow. often go to bed at like 11 p.m. and Ooh. it's continuous days. And we do that for a month, but it's just a different way. And being out there in like all these amazing places ma makes it really worthwhile. Yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, animal here at the Academy of Sciences? I actually love the sea dragons at ah. the aquarium. Yeah. Okay. Well, you'll have to go and visit the sea dragons. They are Jerome's favorite. Um, I am personally very fond of the mantis shrimp myself. But if you haven't been to the rainforest already, there are some really great birds there to check out. Um, and I'm sure that you have checked yeah. those out quite a bit as well. Yeah, I went there a couple Yeah, times. studied any of those. So do we have any last minute questions for our researcher here? All right. Well, I want to thank you. Anything you wanted to add um, about just what it, what it takes to be a scientist? Are there any aspiring scientists out there, maybe? So what would you recommend for today's youth um, to becoming a scientist or a researcher like yourself? Well, I guess you have to, be, to really like what you are doing. Um, and it's not always e easy to go through, especially in evolutionary biology, what we're doing. There are not that many opportunities. But it's really worth it when you have the, the chance and the, the will to do it. Yeah, absolutely. You get to discover all sorts of new cool stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. And thank, thank you, so you all for coming and, uh, and watching the chat and being part of the chat. And uh, have a really great rest of your day. And enjoy some of the really cool fruits of the research of people just like Jerome Fuchs here. So thank, thank you so much, Jerome. Thank you, Sonia. Enjoy the rest of your day.